Hi, this is Dale here at the Iron World Tour, one of many stops. And here we are today in Manchester, England, with Dr. Marcel Nielen of Rodbert University Medical Center in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. Marcel, I really enjoyed your talk today about replacing Sanger sequencing with ion torrent PGM. Thank you. What can you can you share with the audience some of the highlights of today's talk? Well, the, the, probably the biggest highlight is that um, it's now um, more or less shown in, uh, in real uh, actual data that mm -hmm. uh, the uh, sensitivity of next-gen sequencing technology is more or less just as good as the golden standard Sanger sequencing. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you took several hundred known amplicons with mutations in them from, what, almost a thousand yes. individual yeah. samples. Yes. Is that so, correct? So, yes. Yeah. So, so in, in total, we have tested the entire uh, um, number of amplicons mm -hmm. that contained um, pathogenic mutations that we have found in 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the entire collection was tested mm -hmm. of pathogenic mutation that we found in a year. Mm -hmm. And um, um, they were basically all uh, recognized by next-gen sequencing, mm -hmm. uh, except for two. Um, and the, so we had two false negatives which of, of course are the interesting ones. Yes, but in a context of how many true sort uh, So of, the, uh, the number of true positives yeah. was like 1,460 uh, true positives. Sure. So, so in that sense, um, the sensitivity is good. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. But these false negatives are, are of course interesting because of these gives you the opportunity to really improve your technology and also yes. the software that you are using. Yes. Uh, it's not that these were missed by the sequencer, mm -hmm. but these mutations were mainly missed because of the uh, algorithms that were used to, to, uh, to analyze uh, these next-gen sequencing data sets. Yeah, so we have a very few number of false positives. You yes. mentioned there were two. Yes. And there was a certain set of false uh, negatives, yeah. which mentions that you mentioned that is able to increase the sensitivity of the calling. Yes, yes. So that's what we're currently aiming for, is mm -hmm. to, to make the software uh, so good and so reliable that, the, that we don't uh, miss also these yes. mutations. So even before that tuning takes place, still you were able to calculate sensitivity and specificity yes. numbers that were really high. Yes, yeah, so the, the, the sensitivity is almost 99.9%. Uh, .9 wow. And the specificity is even higher, it's 99.98%. Wow. So, okay. so the, in, in that sense, the PGM is, uh, is doing very well. Yeah. Uh, next gen sequencing is almost uh, up to speed, I would say. Yeah. Another interesting part of your talk was regarding how you were able to collapse the number of barcodes yes. by, if I remember correctly, one particular sample with one particular gene, then you, as long as you have in that same pool a different sample with a different amplicon yes. from a different gene, you can then combine them together because yes. as you said, the gene acts like the barcode. Yes, yes. Can you that, elaborate that's on that? Ba that's ba basically the biggest innovation that we've done mm. uh, in, in the lab. So, um, barcode, using barcodes is, is uh, by far the most expensive part from se the sequencing uh, mm. um, as, uh, workflow. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do a, a really a cost-efficient way of sequencing your samples, it's something to consider, it's something mm -hmm. to, to think about. And mm -hmm. uh, so we developed new strategies to use actually the the uniqueness of the amplicons and the uniqueness of the gene or the, uh, the amplicons that are of a certain gene, they are basically the barcode. Mm -hmm. um, and of course we have a, a long, longer or a, a long history of Sanger sequencing. We know mm -hmm. that our robots and our automation doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, that history has been built so we can re reliably say that, okay, if we know this amplicon is in a mm. specific well, um, the, the sequence will be, of course, of this and this gene. Uh, and in that sense, you can create pools of a large number of genes as long as all these amplicons are unique. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so if, you t if you test multiple uh, samples for mm -hmm. uh, uh, the same gene, mm -hmm. then, uh, of course, you have to use uh, uh, a certain amount of barcodes because yes. you cannot recognize these, you, these amplicons mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. If you test multiple samples from all unique genes, mm -hmm. then you can use no barcode. And you mentioned that your typical workflow run 
just uses one or two or yeah so so we, we, we started to use this wor uh, workflow uh, mm -hmm. in January and uh, I just received a collection of the number of barcodes that we have used mm -hmm. and uh, roughly you can say we use only two or three barcodes yeah. per day. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's quite incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for a very interesting presentation, Marcel. You're welcome. This is Dale. If you're interested in following our activities at Iron World, be sure to stay tuned at lifetechnologies.com forward slash behind the bench. I want to thank uh, Marcel for his time this afternoon. Certainly, if you're in the Nijmegen area, feel free to visit his laboratory. Mm -hmm.